And in business, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is enlarging the pool of options open to Nigeria in achieving the Buhari presidency plan to turn the current economic challenges to an opportunity for Nigerians, especially the common man. The VP has met with representatives of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank as Nigeria continues to improve on its economic stimulus packages for citizens. President Mohamed Buhari has asked the Vice President to chair the Economic Sustainability Committee, ESC, and the committee has been collaborating with domestic sectors of the Nigerian economy and now the VP is interfacing with international agencies for the purpose of ruling out options as the president has directed. Joining us live in the studio is Golaon Olojede. Good day, Golaon. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on the news. It's my pleasure. Yes. So, so much looks bleak at the moment, especially with the plummet in oil prices. Is it good news to hear that attention is now being directed at our informal sector, which accounts for 60% of you know, the workforce? Obviously, um, it's, it's, it's good news. Some, some bookmakers even believe that the contribution is more than 60% to their economy. So if you have 60% of the employment market uh, being uh, focused on that is a very good thing for the economy. Uh, these people employ more people, and um, their activities are more perversive than the, than the bigger uh, employers who are concentrated in one place, and they employ much less than the aggregate of what the uh, informal sector does. So it's a very good news to hear that we are focusing attention on this guy. And is this uh, a realistic recovery plan to direct support to the informal sector? in the country? Uh, don't, don't, don't forget that a critical and tested pathway to getting out of a recession is to spend. Now, the informal sector, by virtue of what has happened in the last uh, few weeks, are greatly impacted. So you may have situations in which the small and medium-scale enterprises will start, uh, they might have even lost, some will have totally lost their capital. So they are laying off staff, and imagine the fact that you can actually have 60% of the entire workforce in, in, in being jobless. That is a very serious matter. But if we have a stimulus package that speaks to these people, what it will do for us is that ensure that the source of income for these people is sustained. So when the source of income is sustained, they will be able to spend, they will be able to help us Rev up consumption. Consumption is very important to getting out of a recession. So maintaining the source of income for these uh, uh, employees is very critical, and stimulus can help us uh, do that. Now, we understand, and I believe that you also know that the government has approached a number of multilateral organizations. We know that the IMF has already approved the you know, relief fund, and the government has also reached out to people, organizations like the World Bank and others as well. Now, in terms of financial accountability, how transparent do you think the government would be in terms of ensuring that these monies that have been disbursed are used for what they were disbursed for? I think, I think the um, civil societies and, uh, have a great role to play here um, in asking all the necessary questions. Because from history, I mean, from, from what we have seen in the past, Sometimes these monies are made available, but they are not properly utilized. And there are not many questions being asked. The difference, however, is that IMF, if you look at the, um, the IMF document, the recommendation documents of Google, you'll see that IMF in itself has uh, put the fragment on the spot, requesting for certain level of accountability. So there will be some uh, auditing periodically there will be publication of certain information. So if you give, if you're going to award a contract, the entire process must be transparent and published. The winners of those contracts must be published. They must, even the background of those companies, we want to know who they are. Those are some of the requests being made of the federal government by the provider of the fund. Um, so I believe that will help with some level of accountability. Then from the civil, uh, civil organizations, we also need to continue to ask questions. If a particular fund has been allocated to a sector, how has it been spent? We have a duty to ask. 
And I believe um, if we ask, maybe we may not get every, every, every answer to everything we ask, but we will definitely get some. Just to be able to support whatever IMF uh, accountability demands. Now, does the involvement of the vice president in such process of economic recovery inspire any form of confidence? Do you think it will inspire the level of confidence that you know Nigerians are looking out for? I believe so, in a way, and I will tell you why. Um, a lot of people have issues with trade money. Um, something, oh, it was used for election, you know, buying votes, all sort of thing. But what people never said was that the money did not get to the people they damn it. That wasn't that wasn't in question. Everybody saw the vice president right in the market with the BOI people with leash and all sort of things. And the fact that you and I were not on the queue to collect the ten thousand shows that. The people that did collect those money were people who really needed them. So I, there, there, there is an element of, um, should I call it, a performance history as far as ensuring that certain money gets to certain category um, uh, or certain structure of society. Then the fact that it sits high up there is the vice president. So as far as the executive information executive lobbying is concerned, is able to put in the word and say, this is what is going on. This is what we need to achieve it. Achieve it. So in a way, I believe it's a plus for the package to have someone at that level um, running the show. Now, with all of the loan that has been requested for and those that have already been approved by these multilateral organizations, in a situation where the country is not able to repay at the time when due, what impact would it have on our international image? Um, the, if you're not going to be able to repay a loan when it falls due, it's not something that happens to you suddenly. You can see the trajectory before you get to that point. So what you do, because this happens apart from government, this even happens to individuals and corporates as well, is that you renegotiate the loan. You seek for moratorium. You seek for interest forgiveness. You, you, you seek for rescheduling of, of whatever obligation is falling due. So th those are all uh, part of what we can do. If for whatever reason we think there's an impending obligation that we may not be able to meet. So those, those are regular things that are, that are done. However, um, like I said, there are not things that happen to you overnight. We see it ahead. And whatever preparation we need to make to avoid those kind of situations, we must. Not being able to meet your obligation affects your credit rate in the international uh, community. And that will affect your ability to raise funds, cheaper funds in the international community. You become a risky uh, a borrower. So even if when people give you money, it will be at a much higher cost because of your risk profile. You want to avoid that by all means. Well, uh, it's always a pleasure having you on the news. It's a pleasure being here. Thank Certainly you. Have a great day.